Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game the video. Today we're taking a look at a black-white prototype surprise deck as I like to call it, as we're playing eight of these three mana prototype creatures between Steel Seraph and Phyrexian Flesh Gorger, and then playing three copies of Undying Malice to maybe surprise transform them into their larger forms, since Malice says when this creature dies, return it to the battlefield tapped under its owner's control with a plus one plus one counter on it. So if we target Steel Seraph or Flesh Gorger in response to a removal spell, or maybe the and trading for it in combat, then we get to return them in their larger forms. Flesh Gorger will be a 7-5 with a plus one plus one counter, so 8-6 with Menace and Life Link, and then Ward making the opponent pay life equal to its power if they want to target it, so that becomes quite pricey. And then Steel Seraph would be a 5-4 flyer, so with a counter a 6-5 flyer, saying at the beginning of combat we can give a creature Flying a Vigilance or Life Link until end of turn, and the Life Link mode very useful when facing aggressive decks. Flying also comes up quite a bit to set up profitable attacks so our smaller creatures can keep attacking, and Vigilance also helpful when playing offense and defense, or playing around a Wandering Emperor's minus 2 ability. And then looking at the rest of our deck, we also have two copies of Touch the Spirit Realm as another surprise way of maybe transforming our prototype creatures as we use a channel ability to exile our creature and return it to the battlefield at the beginning of the next end step. So that can also be quite nice with Steel Seraph or Flesh Gorger, but of course we still have the flexibility of using it as a removal spell, exiling an opposing artifact or creature until it leaves the battlefield. And then the rest of our deck is pretty aggressively slanted, so we can get the most out of Steel Seraph and Flesh Gorger, so Steel Seraph can immediately give a creature flying or lifelink to set up an attack, and the Flesh Gorger also better if the opponent doesn't have much life to work with in the first place. So at one mana we've got three copies of Hopeful Initiate, which can grow thanks to the many two drops in the deck, and of course at three mana we can also maybe give some of our creatures evasion to help train the Initiate, and then Evolved Sleeper we can also slowly grow over time as a decent mana sink. And then we've got some cheap removal with cut down at one mana, at two mana more interaction with go for the throat to destroying a non-artifact creature at instant speed. And then a two copies of Misery's Shadow, also decent mana sink, can pay one mana to give it plus one plus one until end of turn, so the Shadow can keep training initiates as time goes on. And then if a creature an opponent controls would die, Exalt instead can also come up, especially against a Valiant Veteran from the Blue-White Soldiers deck. And then four copies of Tenacious Underdog is another decent two drop that we can also blitz out of the graveyard at the cost of two life to keep attacking and drawing cards. Also pairs quite nicely with the extra life gained from Steel Seraph and Flesh Gorger, so we don't really mind paying the two life to blitz. And of course Shieldred can also gain extra life whenever we draw a card, so that also offsets the underdog nicely while applying extra pressure whenever the opponent draws a card. We also have a Wandering Emperor which we can flash in at instant speed, and between Misery's Shadow and Evolved Sleeper having all these abilities we can activate at instant speed, that can also help disguise the fact that we have a Wandering Emperor in the first place, and then we can maybe exile an opposing tapped creature, or give a creature we control a plus one counter and first strike until end of turn, which can also set up some profitable attacks. And then we have two copies of Adlin at three mana, can apply a ton of pressure, making extra one ones whenever we attack, and then we can maybe give Adlin flying with a Steel Seraph to keep hitting the opponent. And then Adlin also works quite nicely alongside Adversary, another 2-drop that can train our hopeful initiate. A 3-1 a lifelink can also maybe gain flying on turn 3 thanks to Steel Seraph, make it hard for the opponent to race. And if we have spare mana, we can sink it into the Adversary's ability when it enters to pump the rest of our team. So that can also pump the tokens from Adlin, which can then apply a ton more pressure. And then we can also maybe just save an adversary early on if the opponent tries to trade for it, since a 3-1 lifelink is difficult to ignore, and then a Malice can get it back. If we still have mana untapped, we can still pump the adversary using its ability to also increase the rest of our team's power and toughness. And then our mana base, of course, split between black and white, including two copies of Rafine's Tower as an extra black-white dual land that comes into play tapped, that can be cycled later into the game, can easily be replaced with a different black-white dual land if you don't want to craft a Rafine's Tower. And then we've got Shattered Sanctum, Caves of Koilos, got the Abandoned Mire and Igancho for added interaction, can also maybe get a discount from controlling Shieldred or Adlin. And yeah, I think that's all of it, so let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play. Missing a third land, but we have a nice start of initiate into underdog. So we'll try it, and then we just need a swamp, ideally, to 
have access to all our spells, but any land will do for Steel Seraph. Opponent blue white, and there's our swamp. So opponent could be on soldiers, although deserted beach more likely to point towards control. Since soldiers doesn't always play deserted beach and looks like Esper colors. Probably go for a flash gorger unless opponent has a creature which prevents us from attacking unless we gain flying. So yeah, let's attack. Opponent could take out our underdog before we get to attack with it. And a march for x equals 3. So our opponent had to pitch Invoke Despair, good to know. Well, at least if our opponent's back and go for the throat, their hand's gonna be a bit awkward facing all these artifact creatures. Alright, we get to untap and picked up Undying Malice, so now step one attack before playing Steel Seraph, even though we potentially miss out on a bit of life gain. But upside could be huge if they try and kill Flesh Gorger and we go for Malice. Alright, Void Rend, so yeah, uncounterable. So they actually don't have to pay the ward cost, but they still did, so they paid 3 life for no reason. And then now Undying Malice brings back Flesh Gorger. And now with 8 power, and still attack with Initiate. Okay, let's hope to dodge a board wipe, pretty much. I guess another Void Rend would do it if they realize how ward works. Now I'll play Steel Seraph main phase to play around Wandering Emperor, exiling Flesh Gorger. Go and Syncopates for one. Alright, let's attack. Train initiates. And then now they won't be able to exile Flesh Gorger anymore with Emperor since they cannot pay 8 life. Depopulate would still be quite effective here. But doesn't seem like they have it. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. Great showing from Undying Malice. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and seems fine. Good curve out starts, missing our second white. But we can sink mana into Evolve Sleeper if we miss some of our white mana. Let's see what we're up against. Blue white soldiers, it seems. Okay. Play Underdog. And then next turn we can level up twice if we don't need to exile a creature. Alright, Thalia does stop Underdog from attacking. Can still hit for 3 with a Wolf Sleeper. And then once we find white mana, we can give Underdog flying. So it can still attack. Next turn we can cast a 4 mana touch if needed. Brutal Cathar would be annoying mostly because it resets all the work we've done. Officer, I'm pretty happy to exile here. Before opponent gets a chance to draw any extra cards with it. Alternative was a leveling up Sleeper once again and maybe playing Hopeful Initiate. Which could have been reasonable, give the opponent maybe a one turn window to draw an extra card. Not gonna have the most mana efficient turns once I do find a second white source. Go for the throw, it still works. So Sleeper can attack. If our opponent makes a couple 2 twos at instant speed, they could double block. Although then we could just go for the throat veteran. So I think that works. Would they triple block is a the question. Then I would trade for Thalia and a 2-2. Yeah, I think that's worth it. But yeah, this seems like the most likely outcome. And then we'll see if they want to block. Okay, go for the throat. Veteran keeping up white mana.
And then now planes for both Adlin and Steel Seraph is looking great. Soaring City bounces Sleeper, gets a discount from Thalia. Okay, so now Adlin doesn't have the best setup for it. If we attack with both, they eat Underdog while Initiate grows and we get a 1-1. I guess that's still reasonable. And then I can play Sleeper level up. Steel Seraph would give Underdog flying, so both can attack. That's got to be better. And play Sleeper level up. Can do it end of turn. I'll put a stop so I don't forget. Although with Thalia and play, it's not like we would be able to cast a one mana instance. Another officer. And officers, their opponent finally gets to tap three creatures to draw. But they're already too far behind and our opponent explodes. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Double evolved sleeper. Yeah. It's not the most exciting hand since Malice is not the best combo with Sleeper, since it will reset it. But uh, we'll have plenty of time to draw other action. Another Malice, not exactly what I was hoping for. Next turn, play Sleeper, level up the first one. Up against some sort of Jeskai build. Okay. I guess we'll attack. Opponent may have removal in hand. So now the question is, do I bother leveling up, have them kill it, then go for Malice, but then maybe I'm better off just playing another Sleeper, passing with Malice available. Alright, that exiles it, so Malice doesn't work, so I'll just level up the other one, but I can wait until end of turn. A revelry, yep, yeah, that works. Opponent got to full value. Steel Seraph can give flying. So that's probably reasonable, although we could wait to keep up Undying Malice to protect it. Which may be better. So for this turn we'll attack. Level up Sleeper, keep up Malice. And then next turn, Steel Seraph. Bangbuster for card draw. So they could have a counter spell for Seraph, which would be unfortunate. Could try and play it second main. In case their opponent has some other interaction they want to fire off. But if it's removal, then this is going to work out better for me. Alright, that resolves. And we'll go for flying. Put on draws. And now we're sort of hoping they try and kill Steel Seraph. Evolved Sleeper is also helping Disguise Undying Malice, since it always holds priority when you have single black up. And sure, I'll block. They may be setting up a board wipe. I guess another Bolt would be a reason not to block here, since Malice is not going to work in that case. But feels more like a board wipe. Alright, never mind. Now we can go for Adlin, keep up double Undying Malice. And I guess Swamp is fine. And any reason to not give lifelink? I guess like a Wandering Emperor next turn if they have an extra white source, so that's a reason to give Sarah Vigilance. Bone falls to 9. Alright, let the board wipe come. 
Although Farewell would be the exception since that exiles. So let's make it a Depopulate, shall we? <laughs> There's Depopulate, alright. So Malice on Steel Seraph. If they counter, I can try again. If not, we can also protect Adlin. Although Adlin versus Evolved Sleeper is interesting when we have all this mana. Could see saving Sleeper being better, actually. Now let's save Adlin. Alright, Syncopate for one, so that actually counters. So we only get Steel Seraph back. So we're not out of the woods yet. Bones at three. But another removal spell could end us. Had we drawn an underdog, we could have blitzed it for the win. Deluge to go digging. So Braid still gets us. Maybe a Bound spell can save them. Sunset Revelry back up to seven also works. And yeah, that's gonna keep them alive for one more turn. Gonna keep giving Vigilance to play around Wandering Emperor. Alright, let's see what they've got. We dodged Farewell earlier, but they might have found one in the meantime. Fires of Victory... Kicked. Yeah, that's gonna deal 5 damage after they draw. So your opponent's still in it. They can Shum Shadow for quite some time. So now it feels like we're behind, despite our opponent being at 1. Yeah, that syncopate for one made the difference. Bangbuster draws, makes a pilot, so that's another blocker. And despite having all this mana to sink into shadow, it doesn't matter when our opponent's just trumping anyway. And yeah, there's a Wandering Emperor now to exile shadow. So while we had the answers earlier with Vigilance, now we don't. Opponent back up to three, so if they accidentally tap a pain land, they still survive. And now it's gonna slip away very quickly. So yeah, that's too bad. We had the double undying malice, but uh, one of them got countered. Otherwise we would have stolen the win. The revelry back up to seven, just enough to survive. And now the control deck has firmly taken over. So it's gonna take a very specific set of circumstances to still draw out of it. Since our opponent has a deluge, they can probably find all the answers they need. And a planes is not gonna help our cause. Hullbreaker Horror. So if the game wasn't already very over, now it certainly is. Alright, GG's. Bounce initiates, make some devils. And that'll do it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. And don't have a 1-drop, no 3-drops to go with Malice. So it's a bit underwhelming, but it seems functional. So we'll try it. Keep up cut down. Turn to Underdog. So against another black deck. Keep Tunch the Spirit Realm as an answer to shield it, as our opponent cuts down Underdog, perhaps? Nope. Alright, play another one. Attack for three.
Evolved Sleeper we can try and cut down in response to them leveling up. Although I could do it now just to spend my mana. I'll be shields down on Undying Malice, but then if I pick up a land I can maybe play a larger adversary. Alright, Sleeper down. And let's attack. And I'm probably happy to just uh, double spell. Go to Touch the Spirit Realm to clear a shield root if that shows up. So unless our opponent's running some of those sweepers giving creatures minus two, minus two, we should be okay. Alright, March for one. So that's what they were holding all along. Their shield root. And we'll just exile her. Hit for eight. And then hopefully cross the finish line next turn. So Invoke Despair here is actually interesting since it gets back Shieldred, but if we sacrifice Underdog and Blitz it next turn, I think we still have lethal. So our opponent needs a bunch of cheaper removal spells, which they didn't seem to have earlier. And there's Invoke Despair. So yeah, opponent does get back Shieldred. So we lose to an or draw step, that's fine. Just Blitz Underdog and Smash, Train Initiate. And then six will be going through. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and yeah, our hand seems decent. Now, we have to make a decision since two of our lands come into play tapped early on. How do we want to sequence? Could skip my one drop to guarantee turn two underdog. Could play, let's say, evolved sleeper. Turn two, level up, play a tap land, and then turn three, play initiate alongside underdog. Yeah, maybe that's the best sequence. Also leaves a spot for a cut down if I don't want to level up sleeper. One blue whites, swamp is nice. So now we can still play underdog. So turn one initiate would have worked out a little bit better. Although for opponents playing counter spells and having a sleeper in play has its advantages. Well, I'll give Adlin a try now. Even though it could get countered. Opponent's got a soul partition to exile Adlin, so that's gonna make it cost 5 mana now. Okay, so can level up Sleeper twice. Still play Initiate. I think I prefer playing a Tap Rafine's Tower, so at least next turn I can play Adlin if there is, let's say, a uh, 4 mana Sweeper in our future. Start by attacking and see if there's a response. Can level up at least once. And yeah, let's just level up again. And hang on to initiates, which can maybe grow alongside Adelin. And I've turned Scrutiny for one to draw. And a tap plant, so no board wipe. Well, if I go for Adlin, we get to attack for 7, put the opponent to 1, and then Blist Underdog would be lethal, so give that a try. Dissipate to Exile. Still hit for 6, thanks to that uh, Pain Land. So yeah, Board Wipe's not enough, opponent needs... Two interactive spells, or I guess some life gain will keep them in it. But I can level up Sleeper. And that should still do it, and our opponent knows it, and concedes. On to the next one. 
All right, we're on the play, and yeah, this seems promising. Wouldn't mind picking up a few more lanes, but we can cast our entire hand, even without it. And then sequencing, I think I like just initiate into Tenacious Underdog, as opposed to Sleeper, level up Sleeper play initiate, which is another option. But it's easier to sneak a one drop into play later. But at the same time, I want to be growing initiate, if I can. Opponent on Esper. So we will see if it's a Legends build or a more controlling build. And okay, Forest into Bankbuster, so some sort of multicolor build. So we might see a Leyline Binding in our future. So for now, attack, Sleeper, pass, leveling up Sleeper most likely. Or we could play Adversary. So if our opponent is on a domain deck, they could have drag to the bottom to wipe the board. But otherwise I think I prefer just deploying Adversary at 2 mana since at 4 we have Shieldred now. Could also keep up Undying Malice. But that's probably going to be better next turn. In the event of a drag to the bottom. And we cannot protect against the Leyline Binding anyway. Opponent drawing with a Bankbuster. So... We're gonna get a nice attack in here. And then if we want to keep up Malice, I can still level up Sleeper. Probably gonna hang on to Initiate since we have enough pressure as it is. So we're hitting for 11. Could make it 12. And then I guess with a land, Underdog's lethal, but that's the case either way. And now with Undying Malice, saving a creature for opponent taps out for drag, they would still die. But our land comes into play tapped. Fable's not gonna do it, and our opponent explodes. Alright, so a nice aggressive start, punishing the slow multicolor deck. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, hand seems reasonable. Initiate into Underdog, facing a red deck. So, Adversary, our best tool against Mono Red in this opening hand, and finding a Plains is nice. Saves us quite a bit of damage off Caves. And now we can curve 1, 2, 3 with Adelin. Maybe just try and race the red deck. Another Adversary. So, next turn this will transform, which means removal will exile Underdog. So maybe I do actually want to play Adversary first. So Lenny Strike Adversary. Take four, but we can still play Adlin. And get a bit of a board presence going, and then next turn... Having Steel Seraph to give Adlin lifelink could be huge. So at 4 toughness it's going to be pretty hard for them to kill when stuck on lands. Impulse to go digging finds Warfare, which they can play next turn, and a land. So the attack implies a 2 damage burn spell. And uh, yeah, I could still trade for etching and a burn spell, but... Uh, Given the Steel Seraph line next turn, I don't think it's worth it. So we are down to 8. Gonna take another point of damage off my caves to play Steel Seraph. And our opponent can take out Initiate. And then next turn we can play a 4 mana Adversary. So initiate down. Does get exiled. So our opponent sort of locked into playing warfare if they don't want to waste it. A lightning strike kills Seraph. Okay. So their opponent gives up on the warfare. And then another Kumano. So we're at 8, if I play Adversary, 
pumping the team. These all turn into 2-2 tokens. That's going to be good enough. So opponent has to block. We'll see if they trump Adlin or trade for token. Opponent trumps. So, yeah, at 8 life. Something pretty special needs to happen for the opponent to burn us out, but it's not impossible. But opponent doesn't have it and explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play and our hand seems capable. Can keep up cut down. Doesn't seem likely that I'll need a turn one, so I'll just play my tapped sanctum. So don't need to deal myself as much damage. Alright, turns out our opponent does have a one drop. Undying Malice doesn't have a creature to combo with it. So what's the play here? Probably still go for underdog. Since there are more high value targets for cut down than officer. So we'll take two. Opponent probably making a couple 1-1s, one but Flash Gorger, perfect to go with our Malice. So I think I'm happy to trade Underdog for two 1-1s one since they're probably more valuable for the opponent. Although we could always decide to cut down one of them to keep Underdog. And then we'll have to delay the Flash Gorger. Alright, opponent doesn't attempt an ambush. We'll just go for Flash Gorger. Take it from there. Opponent's got the reinforcements, as we suspected. So now if they do have a Brutal Cathar, at least they'll have to pay a bit of life. Veteran only allows Officer to attack. Opponent's not going to bother. Okay, so hopefully opponent blocks our Flesh Gorger now. Going to attack with just Flesh Gorger, although I guess I could send Underdog and then kill Veteran to maybe shrink some opposing creatures down. Opponent just takes it, in which case I could go Misery Shadow cut down, so the veteran gets exiled. As opposed to playing another Flash Gorger, I think I prefer that. And I'll do it now, on the off chance that they have some protection. And our opponent explodes, yeah, that was good enough. So sadly didn't get to see our Undying Malice in action, but it would have been pretty amazing if our opponent did go for a block. Alright, so we got to see our black-white prototype deck in action. Overall, the interaction with Undying Malice doesn't come up as often as I would like, but the problem with running too many copies of Undying Malice is that you will have matchups where it just doesn't line up at all, where the opponent maybe has some exile effects like their own Misery Shadow, or maybe just some exile-based removal, in which case your Undying Malice is not going to help, opposing copies of Wandering Emperor being an example. So there are definitely situations where it's going to be stranded in hand for a while, but for those few moments where you do get to cast it on a prototype creature in response to removal, it's absolutely worth it. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.